Hi everyone, this is Mamie Monroe and I will be narrating for you today my report about ovarian cancer. I would like to begin by describing the anatomy and function of the ovaries. The ovaries are the two almond shaped glands located on either side of the uterus and the pelvis. Their normal size can range from about 3 to 5 centimeters in length by 2 centimeters wide by about 1 centimeter thick. Once a woman goes through menopause, they will shrink down to about half their normal size. The ovaries are the glands in the female reproductive system that are responsible for the production of the ova or egg for reproduction as well as the hormones estrogen and progesterone. The ovaries are made up of three kinds of cells. Each type of cell has the potential to develop into a different type of tumor. The epithelial cells are the cells that cover the outer surface of the ovary. These can become epithelial cell tumors. Germ cells are those that produce the ova for reproduction. These produce germ cell tumors. Stromal cells form the structural tissue that holds the ovaries together. These are the cells that produce the hormones estrogen and progesterone, and these can become stromal cell tumors. Malignant epithelial ovarian tumors are cancerous and are called carcinomas. This type accounts for about 85 to 90 percent of all ovarian cancers. When viewed microscopically, these tumor cells have many features used to classify them into four subtypes. These are called serous, mucinous, endometroid, and clear cell. If the cells do not look like any of the four subtypes, then it is classified as undifferentiated epithelial ovarian carcinoma. This type grows and spreads more aggressively than the others. Low malignant potential or LMP tumors are also epithelial cell tumors. Microscopically, these tumors do not clearly appear to be malignant. They are also called borderline epithelial ovarian cancer. LMP tumors are slow growing and less life threatening. Epithelial ovarian carcinomas are also given a grade and a stage. Tumors can be a grade one, two, or three, Grade 1 will look the most like normal tissue, and grade 3 will look the least like normal tissue and is most likely to metastasize. Grade 2 will look and act somewhere in between grades 1 and 3. The stage describes how far the cancer has spread from where it originated in the ovary. The stages are A, B, and C, A being best case scenario with the tumor remaining inside the ovary, and C would be the worst. Uh, with the cancer spreading to other organs. Ovarian germ cell tumors form in the ova. Less than 2% of all ovarian cancers are germ cell tumors. This type has an overall good prognosis with 9 out of 10 patients surviving at least 5 years after diagnosis. There are several subtypes of germ cell tumors. They're called teratomas, dysgerminomas, endodermal sinus tumors, and choriocarcinomas. These tumors can also be a mix of more than one subtype. Teratomas microscopically look like the three layers of a developing embryo. This germ cell tumor has two forms. One that is benign is called a mature teratoma and one that is malignant called an immature teratoma. The immature teratoma is a rare cancer that contains cells that look like embryonic or fetal tissue. These typically occur in younger women under the age of 18. Dysgerminoma is rare, but the most common of the germ cell cancers. These tumors grow um, and spread very slowly, and more than 75% of women who have them are cured with surgical removal of the tumor alone. Endodermal sinus tumors are called yolk sac tumors. These are malignant, and when found in the ovary, they are very aggressive and metastasize rapidly through the lymphatic system and to other organs throughout the body. 
Choriocarcinoma is a very rare germ cell tumor or cancer that actually arises within the chorion layer of the placenta during pregnancy. This is a tumor that will mimic a pregnancy by showing elevated HCG levels. However, 50% of these are what is called a hyoditiform mole, which does not form a viable pregnancy. Ovarian stromal tumors account for about 1% of ovarian cancers. These are usually found in women over the age of 50, but about 5% of these do occur in young girls. There are different types of malignant stromal tumors. These are called granulosa cell tumors, granulosa theca tumors, and sertoli Leydig cell tumors. These are considered to be low-grade cancers. Many stromal tumors produce the hormone estrogen, which can cause vaginal bleeding like a menstrual period. Therefore, the most common symptom associated with these tumors is abnormal or postmenopausal bleeding. These tumors can also bleed, causing sudden and severe abdominal pain. This type of tumor is often found at an early stage and has a good outlook, with more than 75% of patients surviving long term. The signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer can be very vague and easily dismissed. When the symptoms are caused by a true ovarian cancer, they will be persistent. Some of the most common symptoms of early stage ovarian cancer are bloating, pain in the abdomen and pelvis, and difficulty eating or feeling full quickly, urinary urgency or frequency, fatigue, sudden weight loss or irregular bleeding. When ovarian cancer is present, these symptoms will persist and present as more severe as the disease progresses. In more advanced stages, symptoms such as nausea, changes in bowel habits, breathlessness, pain in the lower back, hips and legs, abdominal swelling due to ascites, weight gain, and pain with intercourse may happen as well. These symptoms are usually caused by benign disease processes or possibly even cancers of other organs. When symptoms such as these are persistent and intense, occurring more than 12 times in one month for 12 months or less, they should be evaluated by a gynecologist. A risk factor is something that increases someone's chances of getting a disease or a cancer. Simply having a risk factor, or even several, does not guarantee that one will get a specific disease. A person could also possibly have a disease or a cancer and never have had any of the risk factors. The risk factors that the researchers have discovered are specific only to epithelial ovarian cancer. There is much less known about the rarer ovarian cancers, the germ cell and stromal cell tumors. The factors that increase someone's risk for epithelial ovarian cancer are advanced age. The average age upon diagnosis is 63 years old. Women who have never been pregnant. Obesity personal or family history of breast cancer, especially when there is an inherited mutation in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, and estrogen alone hormone replacement therapy. On the other hand, there are some factors that can decrease a woman's chances for getting ovarian cancer. Women who have had multiple pregnancies and breastfed are at a reduced risk. The use of birth control pills for a period of three years or longer because these stop the normal cycle of ovulation. Having a tubal ligation or a hysterectomy may also help to reduce the possibility of the occurrence of an ovarian cancer. The treatments for ovarian cancer consist of surgery and chemotherapy. There are several types of procedures that can be performed to treat ovarian cancer. The most typical are a total abdominal hysterectomy with a bilateral salpingo-oophrectomy, which would be for larger tumors that cannot be removed through the vagina or a smaller incision, or the total laparoscopic hysterectomy with a bilateral salpingo-oophrectomy. This is the robotic surgic 
surgery typically done with the da Vinci robot through four to five small incisions in the abdomen and then all of the organs and the tumor are removed through the vagina. The tumors should never be cut into small pieces or what is called morselated for ease of removal as this may spread the cancer throughout the abdominal cavity. During the surgery, the specimen will be sent for a stat pathology. This is called a frozen section. If this immediate result is positive for a malignancy, then the surgeon will perform staging biopsies and take lymph nodes to determine the stage of the cancer. Once a final pathology is complete, which usually does take about two weeks after surgery, a treatment plan will be created specific to the type of cancer the patient has. Some patients may only require surgery and then close follow-up surveillance with their GYN oncologist. Cancers that have metastasized and are more aggressive will also require several rounds of chemotherapy following their surgery. Now, typically, carboplatin and taxol are given as the first line of treatment. There are other types of chemotherapy that are used if there is a recurrence. These drugs are administered through an IV or a port that is surgically implanted in the right upper chest. The side effects are typically nausea, hair loss, peripheral neuropathy, and fatigue. In some cases, patients will be followed by a number of oncology specialists, depending on the type and severity of their disease. The typical time period for follow-up upon completion of all treatments is five years. There will be a scan, like a CT or a PET scan done once treatments are complete to ensure there is no residual cancer. But then scans will not be done as routine surveillance, only if there is a suspicion of recurrence. For the first three years, patients are monitored very closely with pelvic exams and CA-125 blood tests every three to four months. Years three through five, patients will be seen every four to six months with the same exam and blood work until they reach their five-year goal. Once five years has passed and there has been no recurrence of cancer, the patient is then considered to be cured and their risk of recurrence drops to less than 1%. If an ovarian cancer is to recur, it will most likely happen within the first two years after completion of treatment. Once there is a recurrence of ovarian cancer, the disease is considered to be chronic and incurable. Ovarian cancer causes more deaths than any other cancer of the female reproductive system but it accounts for only about 3% of all cancers in women. There are so many different types of cancers that destroy the lives of so many families every day. Every cancer has a color. Ovarian cancer is teal. It will take the help of everyone to raise awareness of all the different kinds. Keep up with your yearly exams, men and women alike. If you have persistent symptoms that are not normal for you, have them evaluated, and most importantly, talk to your family about any possible hereditary diseases. Knowing if you have a genetic predisposition could save your life. Letting your family and friends know the signs to look for could save theirs. Thank you.